It's like, yeah, coffee bros. Yeah, coffee. Like many fast food restaurants, McDonald's is primarily known for selling shitty food for a reasonable price. And you know what, I respect that, because sometimes you're hungry and don't want to spend a lot of money. The thing is, McDonald's really, really doesn't want people to think that its burgers are just a mass of beef sinew held together with marketing and the limp, flaccid grip of its paper packaging. Something no better shown than by McDonald's staunch refusal to admit that it sells forever burgers. And Nisha, you're no doubt familiar with this story, I think a lot of people on the internet are. Um, you, have you heard about the forever burgers that are sold by McDonald's? Yes, I'm assuming it's referring to the fact if you left a McDonald's burger for years and years, it wouldn't change, it wouldn't get mouldy or anything like that, it would look exactly the same. Yes, and that's a version of the rumour a lot of people probably hear that. McDonald's food just does not rot. Like, if you leave it out to the elements, just nothing happens to it, and that is true. And there are multiple confirmed cases of people keeping uh, McDonald's products for literally years with no apparent wear and tear occurring to the burgers. For example, there are a pair of Australian gentlemen who bought a McDonald's quarter pounder and they kept it in a box under one of their beds for 10 years. If you're wondering, folks at home, why, why did they buy a quarter pounder and then just leave it in a box? Um, they were out after a party and one of their friends said, oh, can you buy me a quarter pounder for when I arrive? Um, I'll pay you when I get there. And that guy never turned up. So as a joke, they just kept the burger in case he ever turned up to an event and they just never saw that guy again. So they just kept it in a box under their bed. And oh my, and it was there for 10 years. For 10 years, yes. And whilst the burger looked fine, it was known as being wholly inedible because it was rock hard. I was going to say it'd be solid. It was just a solid block of just McDonald's goodness. And they even appeared on the news to show it off and they're like, you could just hear it crack. Oh my God. Which isn't that surprising since it was kept in a wooden box underneath a bed in Australia for a decade. Well, the important thing to note though is that the food looked fine. Like it had dried and almost fossilized by that point, but it still looked okay. Yeah. And um, you might be thinking, well, that shows that something happened to it. Like, you know, it may not have rotted away, but something still happened to it. So I'd like to turn people's attention to another case of a McDonald's hamburger being kept for several years, and that is a Snotra House hamburger. So what is the Snotra House hamburger? Now, it is supposedly the last hamburger from McDonald's ever sold in Iceland. And it was bought by a businessman around 10 years ago um, who'd heard the rumours that McDonald's food did not rot and bought it just to see if that was the case. Um, kept it in his own house for a while, noticed that it didn't rot and then gave it to a museum in Iceland <laughs> as a curio. And the museum in Iceland apparently didn't have enough exhibits. They're like, okay, sure, we'll take this old ass hamburger because it is apparently the last one ever sold in the country um, before McDonald's just folded up shop and stopped selling stuff there. And they kept it in a glass case and they had to give it away to the Snotra House hostel because patrons at the museum were stealing fries. What? <laughs> so people were eating what? the fries, years old and suffering apparently no ill effects. Seriously? Yes. Uh, but surely the fries would be like solid or awkward. No, the, they were fri the fries are fine. They were apparently fine because they weren't kept in unideal conditions like the one in Australia. You know, in Australia, you imagine there's a lot of dry heat, a lot of moisture in the air, which caused the burger to dry out. But when it was kept in Iceland, you know, a, a more temperate climate, um, to be diplomatic about how like, cold as balls it is over there, the hamburger, still fine all this time later. And the Snotra House has it as a curio, and with a little plaque on it that just says, this is the last hamburger bought in Iceland, and it looks fine. The only way to tell that it's not just a McDonald's hamburger bought yesterday is the fact the packaging just looks ancient. The packaging is actually worn away before the burger has. Jeez, that's so bad. I think that sums it up, doesn't it? That is so bad. Oh, right. God. I can't believe people were eating the chips, though. Like, if something to me is like a day out of date, it's, it's in the bin. But, I can't, Nisha, I can't. If you were given the opportunity to try the forever fries, the forbidden fries, because no. that's the thing, isn't it, on like the forbidden food? Did you hear about it was like that sarcophagus in Egypt was opened up and it had like cheese in it? And it was like, let us eat the sarcophagus Isn't that cheese. something on The Simpsons? Uh, where Homer eats... The, like the week old sandwich. <laughs> that episode of The Simpsons where Homer gets that big sandwich. And you have that amazing line where he's just sat there with his like eye. He's like nearly dead. And he's like, Marge, I'd like to be left alone with the sandwich. And she just goes, are you going to eat it? And he just goes, yes. And it's like, great. <laughs> it's just the line of, yes. And that's what it's like with the, the hamburger fries. Like the, the forbidden fries. Marge. I'd like to be alone with the sandwich for a moment. Are you going to eat it? Yes. Uh, and that's what I love about the internet when stuff like this happens. I, um, I think it was like an ancient Egyptian tomb got opened up. So, oh yeah, there's, um, 
there's just juice fell out because the mummy inside was still wet and people let us drink the sarcophagus juice. No. <laughs> people didn't want to, which is like the meme of it. And it's like, remember, what was it that ship? That ship got stuck for like three weeks. And then when it got out, people were like, do it, put it back. Put it back. That life was simpler when the, the ship was stuck. <laughs> but are you saying you wouldn't want to try one of the fries just out of curiosity? No. I would. No. I fucking would. That's the thing. When are you going to get a chance to say, I ate a 10 year old McDonald's fry? And that's why the museum had to give it away because people were doing that and they were worried that it's a liability nightmare. If one of them gets ill, then yeah. we're going to get sued, even though none of them did get ill because the fries were fine. And in fact, I believe the Snotra House Hostel has a, just a live stream of just the burger, so you can watch it not rot. And these are admittedly anecdotal stories, so I should point out there have been more clinical studies done on whether or not McDonald's hamburgers will rot, but they're usually shorter in time frame. That's usually like um, a couple of weeks or a month, but the thing worth pointing out about those is that after that month is up, uh, if it's not rotted after a month, it's probably not going to rot at all. If the, you know, the, the environment that it's in stays the same, it's similar to um, a study done a few years ago about jeans, uh, where they asked students um, in a university to wear the same pair of jeans every day uh, for a year to see what would happen. And after the first two weeks, the level of bacteria buildup on the jeans stayed the same. And researchers concluded that after that two weeks, um, well, there's going to be no more bacteria built up on them, and the level of bacteria after that two weeks is perfectly safe. So unless you, like, you know, fall over or spill something on the jeans, you never really need to wash them. That's so weird. Some things are. Same with McDonald's. It's just, it's just so chock full of preservatives that it, it just doesn't rot away. And the operative word in that sentence was preservative because McDonald's hates that word. Yeah, because so they try and make out like the food is 100% or not, maybe not 100%, you know, beef. No, they, they do claim that they is say it it's 100% beef. They say the only thing put into their burgers is salt, pepper, and a little bit of oil for frying. So I was going to say, yeah, I said 100%. I was like, surely they won't claim 100%. No, nope, they do. Uh, Presumably there's an advert they're going to play right now of McDonald's making that exact claim. 100% beef and a pinch of salt and pepper. All right then, so how do McDonald's explain the reason why the food doesn't rot? Uh, well, there is an amazing official blog post put out by McDonald's.com um, re that's responding to the allegations their food does not rot. Saying that, their food does rot, but it just takes um, a lot longer than you'd expect because of the levels of salt present in their food, which dries it out. And that is true, if food is dry, it does not rot. But I think it's hilarious that is the official position of McDonald's that their food is so dry, bland and tasteless, even mold doesn't want it. And that's the thing, like when you see this, it's so easy to tell they're full of shit. So look, there's a picture right here. There's guys on the news with a 10 year old fucking hamburger that can use that shit to bang a nail in. So I'm, I'm pretty sure there's like a few videos out there of people keeping burgers yeah. for so long. I'm sure there was one, I don't know if I'm making it up in my head, but where this woman who had kids saved McDonald's to show them how bad it was. Yeah, Say, look, the food is still, it still looks fine. It's a very common science experiment. It's like uh, putting a tooth in Coca-Cola. It's one of those things that like, you know, health experts like to just use to demonstrate how bad the food is. And McDonald's doesn't like that. So, well, no, it's not preservatives. It's just a lot of salt in there. And salt is admittedly a natural preservative that's been used for like thousands of years at this point. It's just very funny that they're so salty, ironically about <laughs> it, that people keep saying their food does not rot and they have to say, no, it does rot. And have you ever heard of a company doing that? No. Isn't that amazing <laughs> that they're out there? No, our food does rot. And what makes this story so amazing to me is that McDonald's will never be able to fully quash these rumors because the only way for them to do so would, would be for them to release official photos of their food being moldy. And there's no fucking way a company that big is going to do that because the competition is going to jump all over it. So the story continues and will continue forever. And McDonald's are going to have to stay mad about it. So Nisha, what is the oldest bit of food you've eaten? When I think of bad food or out of date food, I think back to when I was younger. Okay. Did you ever have those yogurts that were Monsters Inc? No, I did not. Because uh, you could get like little yogurt pots which had green like circles in them for Mike. And I remember they were strawberry flavoured. And I ate them and they were like a few days out of date. Okay. And I was violently ill oh. for like a week. My story's got a bit of a happier ending than that. I've, like, I've done the classic of being a student and just taking a big gulp of gone off milk, not realising. I've done that a few times. But the, the one that I like to tell is um, when my mum and dad um, separated, my dad was going through the cupboards and we found a tin of hot dogs in there that we got in a Christmas hamper like two years prior. And we looked at it, we looked at the date and the date said like they don't go off like five years. So as a joke, my dad said, you know what? We'll save these for five years and just eat them when they run out. 
because we were like just going out, we doing a big clear out of the house. And then like five, six years later, I think before I was going to university, um, we, uh, we went and got a tin of the same kind of hot dog, new, the tin that's like nearly a decade old at that point, and then put them into two separate pans and we could not taste the difference. Seriously? Yeah. And then another one I did is when I started university, my dad made me a food hamper, just like stuff from the cupboards. Like here's some stuff and there's like a tin of fruit cocktail in there. <laughs> and I just never ended up eating it. And then I moved a year afterwards and noticed I still had that tin of fruit cocktail from my start, the start of the university. I went, you know what? I'm going to save that till the day I graduate. And the day I graduated, I went and I had that tin of fruit cocktail on me. And the day I got my diploma, I went outside, opened it up and ate it with a spoon. Oh my God. Tastes the same. It's fine. I think everyone's got like one of those tins in their cupboards. Like, Just, I've got a fruit cocktail. Oh, you have that like bottle of tomato sauce that looks like it's a big enough white. When's the last time you saw moldy tomato sauce? <sighs> Can you remember when they did the green tomato sauce? I fucking hate that. I don't, tr- I don't trust it. <laughs> like, like the uh, the Mike yogurts. <laughs> is that what puts just anything that's green? Anything that's green. Just Which puts me it. off because like when I have like you know fish and chips, I like to have peas, and I like the look of the green peas and the red tomato sauce. And remember once as a kid, I did that, and it's like green peas, green sauce. How am I supposed to tell where the peas begin and the sauce ends? I need to know. I need to know so I can get the optimum pea, fish, chip, tomato sauce placement on my bread. So when I fold it in half, it all smushes together and makes a really nice line all the way through, like Battenberg. I'm very particular about the food I eat, unless I'm eating 10-year-old hot dogs. 